everyone and welcome back to Art à la Carte. Today I'm going to be talking about sketchbooks and giving you some tips and ideas to fill up or complete sketchbooks. Because if you're like me, I have a bazillion sketchbooks and like it's so easy to start a sketchbook and it's so hard to finish a sketchbook. Today's video is brought to you and sponsored by Smart Art Box and I thought it fit perfectly with this because the whole box is geared around sketching. So if you'd like to find out more about their monthly subscription art boxes, I will leave a link in the description box below where you can check it out. But let's check out what's inside this month's box. Technically it's last month's box because I'm running a little bit behind. And then this box has so much in it, like way more than I thought would be in this box. We have some blending sticks and then this box of little markers. So that way if you want to ink your drawing in after you've sketched it in, then you have a variety of different colors. I've used this brand before and I really like it. The main thing for this box is a set of these Faber-Castell sketching pencils and it's a wide variety pack. Now I have a lot of different pencils but so many of these I did not have and I was excited to try them out. There are some that are familiar like these two. There is a water soluble one which when you add water to it kind of turns a little liquidy and then there's one that's like water not soluble <laughs> which uh, just stays where it's going to be. So if you're watercoloring over top of your pencil it usually doesn't move too much which is fantastic. I have one of these in a really dark one. I think an 8B. This one's a 2B. So the next one was really heavy and it is a woodless graphite pencil which I have a few of these that I bought several years ago and it's awesome because you can just really get in there and shade and you don't have to worry about the you know shaving off the wood. There's a couple different fun things you can do with that and I will show you later on in this video how you can use that. And then there are these two big pencils. These things are huge. So this first one is just a regular pencil, but look how big it is. And I don't know, I think it's so fun. I can't wait to draw with it. After that is another woodless graphite pencil. It's huge, but you can use the sides of it, the backs of it, all around of it to shade in your pencil. It's very handy. If you've never tried one of these, they're fun to play with and I really enjoy using them. The thing that is a problem is that because these are larger size pencils than normal size pencils, it's hard to find a pencil sharpener to use to sharpen it, but this pack comes with a customized pencil sharpener for the both sizes. Along in the box is a really good sketchbook. Because we are talking about sketchbooks, I'm going to be drawing in this one, and so I'm excited about using it. It's not a huge one, which is perfect for me. The paper size is nice and cute and tiny, so it's good for, you know, small projects or studies. Now the thing that I was shocked that was in this box is this temporary tattoo kit. Now I've, I've always wanted to get a tattoo. I always thought it would be fantastic, but I can never decide what I want. And then when it comes to actually doing the tattoo, I'm like a wimp and I don't want like to get tattooed because I don't like pain. So I've never gotten one. Uh, but I've never done one of these before, so it has the ink powder. I think it's kind of like a henna tattoo. I'm not positive. I'm not going to do it in this video. If you'd like to see me test this actual, this product out in a separate video, let me know in the comment section below and I will record it. But it has all the stuff in it that I need, so hmm, I have to decide what I want to make. I don't know. So as I said, this is a smaller sketchbook. It's a four by six size with quite a few pages in it and so... Uh, satisfying ripping off this this sticker. I love it. But if you will notice it is bound with a large spiral bound which if you're right-handed isn't a big issue. But if like me you happen to be left-handed you will know the pain and frustrations that happen when you have a huge binding on a sketchbook because your hand hits it and it's so uncomfortable. So there are two ways to combat this. One is that you can flip the sketchbook backwards and start and make the back side of the sketchbook the front side and work that way. Therefore the binding is on the right side. But you can also take and flip it so that the binding is at the top of the sketchbook and draw a landscape. So those are two options that you have. It is perforated so if you wanted to you could rip the pages out, sketch in them, and then tape them back in your book, I suppose. There's a few different things you can do, but those, those two things are what I mainly do when I'm trying to work with my sketchbook. I want to give you guys a couple of tips and ideas and tricks. It doesn't work 100% of the time because, again, I have so many sketchbooks that are only half finished or have like two drawings in the very beginning, but if I have these tips and I start off with these tips, then generally it helps. One tip is to focus your sketchbook on a certain 
thing. One type of focus I will do is a study of something. I have a sketchbook where I just learned how to draw faces. So I took the sketchbook and I went through and I drew eyes and so a whole bunch of pages were with eyes and nose and mouth and hair and ears and the face. So I didn't have any pictures of cats or dogs. And with those kind of sketchbooks it's easier to come back to them because they have that theme. So you could do a study on, you know, animals or anatomy or architecture, whatever it is. You could even label it. So you could work and sketch in it and then when you want to do something else you can jump into another sketchbook and you don't feel as bad for starting a new sketchbook because your study sketchbook is meant for that. So it relieves a little bit of the guilt. The next trick is similar to a study theme but is to give yourself an overall focus theme. These are great and you'll see people do this like with monthly challenges, Inktober, Mermaid, where they have like a month, a daily like this is what you draw on this day. I'm working on one right now. My theme for this month is fairy tales so every day I'm trying to draw something that's fairy tale related. It's going underneath the hashtag of sketch tumber which is a new monthly challenge that I just learned about. If you want to find out more about some of the monthly challenges I did a video just recently on those. I'll link that in the description box below or at the end of this video so you can check it out. Another idea is to limit your art supplies for that sketchbook. So maybe you're just doing a sketchbook and all you want to do is pencil sketches or maybe you're doing just strictly ink or maybe you are doing a monochromatic coloring uh, through the sketchbook. November is coming up and that's a great one to go with because every day you pick a specific color and then you, that's your main focus. Those are a couple ideas that I have to help me work on and complete sketchbooks. But enough of that, let's go ahead and take a peek at some of my old sketchbooks, shall we? I haven't looked at some of these in a long time. So this one here is a watercolor sketchbook. The paper is watercolor. A friend of mine gave it to me for Christmas. So thank you. I don't have a ton of sketches in this one, but I was just playing around with watercolor. It's a great one for travel as well. I do have a lot of toned sketchbooks. I love toned paper, either grays or browns. Um, so this one I have, I don't, definitely don't have a theme for it, but I just started playing around. I like using the tone sketchbooks with markers and gel pens because you can play around with the light and dark hues. So with a normal white piece of paper you only get the white of the paper but if you're using a toned sketchbook then adding a colored pencils or gel pens you get to play with those colors as well. So this sketchbook here I did one of my focused themes and I'm doing just on faces. Now it can be any kind of face. It can be a famous people or people from my head or portraits from photos that I'm looking at, but it has to be a face. Now this sketchbook here has really thin paper when I got it. Um, I just wanted a quick kind of cheapy sketchbook to work in just to put in sketches and ideas. If I get a sketchbook that has really high quality paper and it's kind of expensive, sometimes I get a little nervous to draw on it. But if I get a sketchbook that's only a couple of dollars, then I have a little bit more freedom to do just fun sketch ideas, like quick sketch things for paintings I've done. In fact, in here is the, the, the Alluring Darkness Mermaid that I did for one of the collaboration videos. I have the original sketch that inspired it. So I was like, yeah, I'm so glad I still have that. I have storyboard ideas for story ideas from years and years ago. This is another one that is kind of a little bit like a bullet journal. Um, and sketchbook all, all the same. So you'll see a lot of like things I've written and taken notes and then random sketches throughout it. I have a couple of these that I took with me on trips because they're really lightweight. They don't, you know, I can put them in my carry-on or in my backpack while I'm traveling and they don't take up a lot of room and not too heavy. So I can sketch while I, while I travel around. This one is probably my favorite sketchbook of all. It was one that I got when I bought my very first Copic markers. And if you'd like a step-by-step -step look at the sketchbook. I have a video on this, but I recorded my learning process. So some of them turned out really good, some of them, yeah, not so good. But it was my Copic journey. So it was the first like three months of using Copics, and I love this sketchbook. I finished every single page. It's one of my few that is completely, completely finished. If you struggle with trying to finish sketchbooks, don't let that be a hindrance from sketching. As long as you're working and, and practicing your art. That's the main important thing. 
doesn't matter if it's an, a finished sketchbook or a brand new sketchbook, whatever inspires you to draw. I encourage you just to keep going at it. If you have a favorite brand of sketchbook, because I don't have enough sketchbooks already, let me know in the comments section below what your favorite brand of sketchbook is. I'd like to take a peek at it. And once again, a big thanks to Smart Art Box for sponsoring this video and helping me to continue to create content for you guys. Um, again, their information is in the description box as well. I hope you found the tips and tricks that I had for working in a sketchbook and the little, little glimpses of my sketchbook um, past journeys. It's fun to kind of walk down memory lane and take a peek at some of them. You can definitely see some of the things I was really interested in drawing and, and my moods. If you enjoyed this kind of video and would like to see some others, you can click on either one of these links and it will take you on another artistic adventure with me and all that fun stuff. <laughs> Well guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, God bless you guys. Keep drawing, being creative, sketching away, and we'll see you in the next art video. Bye-bye!